Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is David Scores and I've made a crash course, well, I intend to make a crash course on coronaviruses because due to the pandemic it's a subject that many of you are really interested. In addition, I got really tired of saying the same things in interviews, so I decided to make this course, especially for those of you who do not have a technical, uh, biomedical uh, knowledge on the subject. So basically, in this first uh, lecture, I'm going to talk about the origin of the virus causing COVID-19. Uh, this is a talk that I gave uh, nearly 20 years ago. So uh, I'm giving it from a kind of a historical perspective. Anyway, let's, let's start with the two most likely scenarios. The first one is that SARS is a biological weapon created by bioterrorists, and the second that it comes from outer space. <laughs> but uh, seriously, uh, this is not the case, this is a very serious video, uh, so I'm going to give you um, reliable uh, information on coronavirus biology and not this type of hypothesis that sometimes arise from a non-specialized -special, um, uh, public. As I mentioned before, I gave uh, this presentation nearly 20 years ago. Not in 2019, but in 2003. That's why I called this presentation Echoes from the Past, an outbreak of pneumonia. And uh, many of you may not remember that in March 2003, uh, there was a warning uh, from the CDC in Atlanta and the WHO of an unusual pneumonia outbreak in China. So there were, as in 2019, there were many people dying from the disease. And uh, Dr. Carlo Urbani identified this disease as a novel uh, kind of uh, illness and he called this severe and acute respiratory syndrome, or SARS. Uh, he died of the disease uh, treating patients uh, with uh, this illness. So at the time, it was an unknown disease and clearly out of control. And there was, as an absolute priority, uh, we try to identify uh, the pathogen. We have to remember that this was 20 years ago, so pathogen identification was not as straightforward as uh, we can do today. This is an example of the situation in which we were on 17th of March 2003. This is the, uh, the map of the world, yeah? And uh, this pneumonia outbreak, this SARS outbreak, took place here, which is basically the same region in which uh, the COVID-19 uh, jumped to the human population 20 years later. Yeah? So we had quite a big number of, of infected people in China, 255 by March uh, 2003. And it was spreading quite rapidly. So, for example, uh, it spread to the United States of America, in which we found 37 cases, and to Canada with 44 cases. In Spain, uh, we had a potential case uh, that it turned out uh, not to be uh, SARS, but common. common. I'm sure all, all of you know how to interpret this kind of graphs uh, during these two years of pandemic with COVID-19. This is the number of uh, subjects. The, this here, the accumulated cases in March, April, May, May and June. So you see it was exponentially growing until May and June 
2003 because China imposed very strict measures to try to contain, uh, to contain it. These are the new cases and as you see from May onwards it was uh, that they were clearly decreasing and the number of the deaths during these four months was uh, uh, not above uh, a thousand cases. The death rate of this original strain of SARS was close to 10%, uh, so about 5 to 10 fold uh, higher than the, the current COVID-19. Anyway, uh, all the scientists that we were working uh, during this time in coronaviruses, we tried to identify the pathogen causing SARS. And we quickly realized that antibiotics didn't have any effect, so it was probably a, a, of viral origin. And the first tests uh, for pathogens were negative with the exception of paramyxoviruses, chlamydia and coronaviruses. However, we didn't know which one was responsible for SARS. Then, uh, a short time uh, later, we realized uh, that SARS was caused by a novel coronavirus because uh, coronaviruses were detected in samples from patients systematically and independently from different uh, labs. We could sequence the genome in a record time, something like uh, two months approximately. We have to remember that this was 20 years ago, so it's not like nowadays that we can, I don't know, sequence uh, thousands of, of, of coronavirus genomes in a couple of days. Yeah? Uh, the technology has advanced quite a lot. So we had its genetic information and we found that it was a novel coronavirus. And we could demonstrate that this coronavirus was causing SARS because it fulfilled the Cox postulates. Could be isolated from patients, could be grown in vitro, it induced SARS in monkeys, and patients showed specific immune responses against the proteins of this virus. As you can imagine, uh, I also, during this time, there was a high social alarm and many doubts. Uh, nobody knew what coronaviruses were, apart from us, that were working on coronaviruses. So they were asking us, uh, where does it come from? Or is this a unique case in nature? Or why is it so virulent? Or uh, has the outbreak finished? Uh, you have to remember that I gave this talk in July 2003, and we still had some cases of SARS going on. So basically, these are coronaviruses. I'm not going to uh, describe them in detail because I will make another presentation with the composition of coronaviruses, but basically uh, they are pretty beautiful in, under, under the electronic microscope. They are spherical with a membrane. They have a crown of peplomers here that they use to, to enter the cell. So basically an RNA uh, virus uh, um, which had a typical appearance under the, 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 the microscope. Uh, we could sequence the genome as well. I'm not going to give too many details here. I will make another another uh, video on it. But it was a typical coronavirus genome encoding the replicates, the structural genes here, and some novel genes that uh, uh, were giving uh, these novel coronaviruses with an enhanced pathogenic pathogenicity in humans. Well, coronaviruses uh, are quite common in, in, in the animal kingdom. They are classified in three groups here. They can infect many species, including us, pigs, dogs, sorry for this mistake, cat, humans, cows, mice, birds, rabbits. And these are some of the prototype uh, coronavirus species here, human coronavirus 229E which causes common cold, the human coronavirus OC43, which also causes a common cold. But anyway, 
This coronavirus is the usually cause respiratory or enteric uh, diseases. Where does it come from? When we virologists uh, want to understand the potential origin of a virus, we compare its genome with the genome of other species of coronaviruses. Mm -hmm. So here is a phylogenetic tree of some of the typical species of coronaviruses, avian coronaviruses, cow, mice, the SARS coronavirus, a human coronavirus, two porcine coronaviruses. And we found that SARS coronavirus belong to the group two coronaviruses, very similar to cow and, and, and mouse coronaviruses. However, mm, we found that the SARS coronavirus uh, had jumped from uh, civet cats to humans here in China. And at the time that I was giving this presentation, we didn't, we, we, we hadn't identified the uh, endemic species in which this, this virus uh, uh, was living. Yeah? And then later we found that bats uh, had uh, this virus uh, as an endemic virus. Yeah? And these bat species are quite common in China and also in, in India. Is this an exceptional case? Uh, possibly you know that uh, it's clearly not an exceptional case. This kind of pandemics uh, have taken place throughout our history, our history as a species. So we have pests, smallpox, cholera, tuberculosis, several influenza uh, pandemics, AIDS, that have killed quite a number of people. For example, the influenza pandemic killed about 50 million uh, people yeah, and the AIDS uh, killed about 10 million deaths uh, per decade in the first 20 years after uh, being introduced into the human population. So it's not an uncommon or a unique case and we will, um, and we will find these kind of cases also in the future. Indeed, there are several viruses that cause imaging diseases in humans every year. And these imaging diseases are characterized by outbreaks of low frequency, once per year, once per two or three years, causing serious disease in humans, but they spread very poorly uh, from human to human. They are caused by endemic animal viruses uh, that accidentally infect humans. And these accidental infections uh, take place because of the ecological changes induced by humans. When humans go to enjoy nature or uh, they, invade, um, they invade forests for agriculture and so on, they get in touch with uh, animals that have these viruses, or even the illegal trade of uh, wild animals, which is uh, unfortunately quite spread. And uh, these accidental infections in humans are caused by the, the extraordinary capacity of viruses to mutate and being selected. Examples of emerging viruses, we have uh, the typical orthomyxoviruses with the flu, poxviruses, filoviruses, retroviruses causing HIV, rhabdoviruses, flaviviruses, bungiaviruses, paramyxoviruses. Every year we see this type of in infections trying to jump into the human population. Has the outbreak uh, finished uh, and possible future scenarios that uh, we had in July, sorry for the mistake here, 2000, 2003. You have to remember that I gave this talk 20 years ago, so we already know the answer now. The first thing SARS propagates throughout humankind. And this has happened yeah, 20 years later with a second outbreak, but it has really happened. During this time, we didn't know if it was going to happen. 
the SARS adapts to humans. This is the second scenario and becomes an endemic disease. Um, possibly this is the situation uh, that we will likely uh, face in the near future with COVID-19. We have to remember that COVID-19 is the same strain, is the same type of virus from uh, the SARS uh, strain in 2003, with a few mutations, uh, especially in the spike in the spike gene. The third scenario: SARS is controlled. And this is what happened in 2003. Sorry for this again. In, 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 in August and September of 2003, uh, all the outbreak uh, was controlled. But we didn't know if we were going to have yearly outbreaks similar to flu. This situation, this is the one that I was expecting. So it was unusual that we had to wait 20 years for the second outbreak uh, to uh, come into the uh, human population. And finally, uh, we were claiming uh, for governments to invest in the development of novel antivirals and vaccines, something that is taking place uh, right now due to the um, disaster, the economic disaster and the health disaster, that this outbreak, that this pandemic, we cannot consider this an outbreak. This pandemic uh, has caused to the human population. Thanks for watching and if you have enjoyed this first uh, lecture, uh, just click on, on the mousy thing that appears here and subscribe uh, uh, to my channel. Thank you very much.